we're going playoff big butts. We are going to do playoffs. I mean, yes. that's those are the extra special butts in the league. So that's what we should do for now on. Go now. You have to guess who this butt <laughs> is as you tend to say a stats, and I'll figure it out. That <laughs> yeah. might be something good All for the right, future. Right. Oh yeah, that's right. It's unbutt. Tinned for a reason, not just for my shirt, but yeah. we like the butts. We do. It's key to success for football. <laughs> Have you told your wife yet that you're an expert in this department? Have you told her yet? No, no, why? I've what are you brought, waiting for? I've brought it up. What are you waiting for? She knows for? that I have taken a closer look at the defensive line. Okay, good. Because I just I haven't mean, framed it in that way. I think that's the next T-shirt that should be available. Yeah, like like a small Chris Sims unbutton, uh -huh. but then a picture of a butt on the and be <laughs> like and have something like you know Ahmed's big butt award yeah. ABA. We could sell that. ABBA. Yeah. I like big butts right. in the NFL yeah. that create defensive pressure. Exactly. It's like a long tagline. We got a lot of big butts playing this weekend. Pete, let's, a good get one. That, let's get that T-shirt in production. Man. Pete says 2027. I mean, <laughs> Giants, Eagles, that's got big butts galore in it. Yeah. Right? Yep. Bengals, Bills, some decent ones. Yeah. You know, not known for that, but like DJ Reader and Jordan Phillips. Right. If Jordan Phillips is healthy, man, those are those are some big ones. Cowboys lacking a bit. Their Cowboys are lacking a bit. I would even say the 49ers are not necessarily that kind of mm. big buttish, even though, I mean, I know Armstead and Kinlaw are awesome in the right. middle, but they're a little more of an athleticness to them as well. Jaguars and Chiefs, there's some big butts there. There is. I mean, Derek Nadi, I, I, I'd put up his butt against anybody. Pete, I want to do a, like kind of a little research <laughs> project, like all yeah. the biggest butts. Like, what was their like against the spread this year? Right. I want to know how gamblers fare just betting on the big butts this right. year. Well, I, I'll say this. I do think we're getting to the point, to your point here and to something we've hit on a little bit, that these big butt guys are a little bit underrated for their value of the football team. Like, we've had this talk even in the draft process, right? Yeah. You know, Dexter Lawrence, I don't know, Pete, what was he the year he came out in the draft? My number – but my number two D tackle, right, mm. I think, that year? You know, just like last year with Jordan Davis. I'm sitting yeah. here going, wait, they're top ten pick. What are, what are we doing here? Right. You know what I mean? To where, you know, I think you're seeing the value of these guys. There are some games where, like, no one affected that – Giants Vikings game, I would argue more than Dexter Lawrence. I don't think any D lineman affected any game more than Dexter Lawrence did this weekend. Yeah, right. So, so there's, there's. I think that value has been underrated. I feel like the NFL is starting to realize. Wait, these 340 pound guys are no longer just run stuffers. Evolution has made them, you know, explosive, and they're better at pass rushing. And yeah, you know what I mean. I mean, Chris Jones. He's 340. Amazing. See what yeah. he does on a weekly basis. Yeah. We know. I mean, Fletcher Cox, Javon Hargrave, Leonard Williams, uh, T Dexter Lawrence. I mean, yeah. it is it is amazing. And evolution it, versus creationism. Right. You just got to watch the NFL and you believe in evolution. <laughs> <Right? Because> these <laughs> defensive linemen. <laughs> You're funny. These people have evolved. <laughs> um, <laughs> dominating, uh, dominating the game. Yeah, we've gotten controversial here at the top of the pod. Oh yeah. Uh, so uh, welcome to Wednesday. Hello. What the f happened? Yep. Uh, what the f will happen for these four divisional games? Uh, but because there are some people out there, Chris, who who only watch you on the pod. You know, yeah. when you're with Mike Florio, you do a great job. Some people just don't watch that. Yeah, right. You know, some I understand. It's the Florio watch. effect. They're like, I can't take it. I can't watch the guy. <laughs> so we haven't had your analysis right. of what happened with Tom Brady's last game in Tampa. Right. I'm, I'm willing to say that. Yeah. He's not going back to Tampa. Definitely not going back to Tampa. The question is, is just does he come back at all somewhere else? I'm going to say no. I know. Because he doesn't have the opportunity or because he doesn't want to? I, I, I feel like maybe... I think he'll he'll ultimately decide. You know what? It's it's just time to move on and move on with life. Like the opportunity is not. Good and I don't enough. know if there's an opportunity that's just going to be yeah, flat out in your face. Like, hey, we definitely need you, and we're ready to win this moment. Yeah. Right. I mean, not off the top of my head. I understand the Raiders connection, and I don't think they're like crazy far off. You know, I don't think he's going like the 49ers or anything like that. The Dolphins. Hey, sure, maybe. But, I, you know, again, the, the thing I think people have to realize, too, with teams like the Dolphins and, and teams that are maybe ready kind of to win right now is just to go, okay, we got them, but then next year we have to answer the same question once again, too. Yeah. Um, it's been a, it was a tough year. It was a tough game for him on, on well, Monday night. Well, Definitely you've, was. You've been a noted Brady hater for yeah. your entire life. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, yeah. Ahmed's <laughs> coming here today just trying to fire <laughs> me up about everything. You're already in a bad mood, kind of. You're working a lot here lately. You have no days off in the playoffs. Did you think I was in a bad mood? No, you actually yeah. you seemed in a pleasant mood. 
mood. Oh. But then as as I was around you more today, I was like, oh, he was in a bad mood. <laughs> That's because uh, of you. And then, and then I brought more. Yeah, we'll get into the 49ers and uh, their response to you uh, saying that Brock Purdy was a lesser Mac Jones. Yeah, we'll get you. into that. Good, thank you. That got even more fired up. I like that conversation. Um, but but with Brady, yeah, you, d- you didn't think he, he played all that well in no, this game. No, he definitely didn't. We know Dallas played well for sure. Uh, he missed throws early on in the football game. You know, I think that's the first thing you would talk about. And I think it's everything we kind of – it was a microcosm of the year for what we saw from Tampa Bay. You know, a few moments of going, ooh, wow, ooh, I think they can maybe – ooh, maybe they could put another drive together. Ooh, that was a good third down play. But just never being able to consistently rely on any aspect of their offense. The stats are misleading. They all came when the game was kind of out of hand. You know that. Um, but, yeah, I thought, you know, overall, yeah, he didn't play well. And they got just issues on that team that are a problem right now. I mean, you know, the left tackle was still a problem. I mean, he was a problem all year long. They couldn't protect. They had no chance. Everything kind of we talked about, right, Monday leading up to the game. What, what was one of the things I said? I said Brady has to throw at 40 or 40. 45 times they have no chance to win the game right Correct. i think i think i said that yep and you know it, it kind of played out that way they tried to run early a little bit but they realized oh wow we, we were not going to be able to and we can't be in second and 12 and second and yeah. 13 all game so they went to let's just get brady to get us in those positions but you know between the pass protection him being at his age mike evans doesn't scare you as much anymore Godwin's still good, but I still don't even think he's back to his normal explosive self. Your third receiver's Julio Jones, right? They were just outmatched. They found a team that was ready, motivated. Yeah, they, were. they were clearly the mo- more physical team on the football field. Um, and I think they had a good understanding of, hey, once we stop the run, we know where we, we have a good feel for, you know, Brady, Leftwich, the tendencies of the offense. And I thought Dallas had a really good game plan on the defensive side of the ball, too. Do you feel like it was inappropriate to scapegoat Byron Leftwich? Yes, I do. I do. Yeah, I, I don't I don't I don't understand it. Um, I, I, you know, one. OK, he is an architect of an offense that wins the Super Bowl his first year as Brady. And they figure out how to play around him. They don't remember. I mean, they were 7-5, and five and we were all going, man, Brady's, you know, not comfortable. And he's, you know, Bruce Arians made a few comments. Like, he's got to be more aggressive. He's going to hang in the pocket and throw the ball down the field. There's people open, right? They figured out a way to make that work. They go on and win the Super Bowl. They dominate the Super Bowl. Brady plays awesome. Last year, you know, can't run the ball, but they're – you know, arguably the best passing team in football, right? And then this year, I mean, there's so many things you could talk about that were wrong with the Buccaneers organization. Let Just, hey, the handoff of Bruce Arians to Todd Bowles. Uh, oh, wait, in that same time when he was handing it off to Todd Bowles, Brady was trying to go to Miami and not even play with the football team. Then decided, oh, wait, this is the only place I can come back and play. And there was the distraction of, wait, did he get Bruce Arians fired? Is he stepping aside because of Brady? There was that. You know, and it just it was one thing after another for this football team and not all Brady related. And then, of course, they had some injuries. There's no Antonio Brown. There's no Rob Gronkowski that hurt their football team. Shaquille Barrett gets hurt. Right. You know, they they don't keep JPP. So there, there was a few things there. But ultimately, right. I think it is the offensive line issues and more of a personnel thing than I felt like the scheme itself. Uh, and that, that's where it's a, a little disappointing. I, yeah. you know, either way, if Leftwich does get fired there, he's going to land on his feet and be somewhere, and he'll still be damn good. Either way, if this is Brady's last year, yeah. next year will be the first time that everyone agrees with your placement of him in your top 40 quarterback <laughs> list. Everyone will be like, well, we can now finally agree on that. Uh, you've had Dak Prescott very high in the past. Man, he played great. He was good in this game. Yes, so do you, give, do you give more credit to, to Dak? Do you give more credit to Kellen Moore and the game plan for this one, or both? I think both. I think it's fair to give both here. You know, they, they, they ran the ball well. Right, didn't dominate. I think they saw though that there were some holes in the in the secondary, mm-hmm. and I think, you know, with Tampa's run defense not being as good as it's been in years past, they they realized that they were going to have to respect the Cowboy running game to where it should give some looks in the pass game. So they relied on coming out and throwing the football. I think realizing that you know Todd Bowles and company were going to be worried about the run and weren't going to try to you know lose the game that way. Um, but good game planning. And then Prescott was fearless in the game. I mean, he just never blinked. He just, it's like he saw it, he let it rip. He saw it, he let it rip. 
There was just there was no second guess on himself. We talked about like some of the mechanical issues yeah. and that affecting was decision. causing him to pause. Yeah, like, maybe ah, pause, maybe not throw there? that ball. No Ooh, evidence that, of that. I really was no evidence. And and do I think he threw the ball to his utmost capabilities? No, he still does. He still hasn't. But he threw it damn damn good. Mm-hmm. And hey, Dallas is uh, a very talented football team, and we see. I mean, we've seen that before. So I picked them to win the game. You know, the year showed us that the Bucks were this. The year showed us that the Cowboys were this. We just got kind of convoluted with the last two weeks of the year where they didn't have to play, like, motivated football. And we started to go, wait, wait, is that the Cowboys? And it's like, no, no, no. The first 15 weeks were the Cowboys. Yeah, they lost a few games, but we saw them at their best. They're yep. damn good. And they're uh, definitely one of those teams that, um, I, I, th- I you know, listen, I mean, the, 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 the still the top four teams are the top four teams here. Uh, I think there were... I'm still – or the top five teams of the top five teams. I'm still Niners, Eagles, you know, Chiefs, Bills, Bengals, and Cowboys are in that conversation. So I meant to say top six because I know okay. we did that a few weeks ago, right, where I was like, the only these six teams, I still am going to put the Cowboys in one of those teams that could still go to the Super Bowl, even though I do think the 49ers and Eagles are a little bit better than them. Yeah, they could have some issues. Yeah. Defensively, they were good against Tom Brady. And I do want to give you credit, too, because – like mid season, yeah. People are like, all right, they're eventually going to figure it out. The Bucks, Tom right. Brady, that right. offense. And you're like, I don't know that that's going to happen. Thank you. And it yeah. didn't happen. Yeah, it, it just didn't. There was there was too many other things, too many other warning signs. It's just there goes to a point, certain point in the season, through my experience playing or even watching my dad growing up or being around it, where you go, no, no, no this is the team. We can all be hopeful that we regain the magic from last year. Yeah. But this is it. They're not going to just magically all of a sudden the left tackle is going to block people, right? This is him this year. He's got to go back to the drawing board, work on mechanics, you know, probably get in the weight room, do certain like this. So there was just too many things there, let alone Brady's personal issues. Brady going to Mr. Kraft's wedding on a Friday night. Like, there just was, it seemed like one crazy thing after another in Tampa. Um, but, yeah. but Dallas, let me just say this too. They got some freaks. We know that. They. Put Michael Parsons at linebacker a little bit more on first first down in this game than they have in the last half of the year. I think because they wanted, they just said, you know what, first or second down, if they do try to run, okay, fine, he'll be here as the guy that can clean it up at linebacker. Yeah. Also, if they do, do a play-action pass, he's really good at reacting, getting back downfield and covering a crosser or a tight end, right? So they did that, let alone I think they went, wait, our best 11 on the field is probably with Michael Parsons that stand-up linebacker. Right, hmm. with 92, Dorrance Armstrong as the other D end, but he's such a force at D end that you compromise maybe having the best 11 on the field because this guy in that position can make such a mark on the game if he plays there enough, which right. which he did, and he was a pain in the ass. And Donovan Smith could have been called for held holding a few times during the game. All right, the next thing to talk about yeah. is can they limit what the 49ers do on offense uh-huh. but before we get to that yeah we do have to say goodbye to the tampa bay buccaneers oh, and so it's the one, one poem that we thing. have left from super wild card weekend so Kristen, if you have the a, music i got big on. expectations for this one right here there was a a lot of blank canvas to play with here <laughs> in this one so i'm excited for this there's a lot a lot happened you, yeah, <laughs> yeah you mentioned it yeah brady shady could have yeah. gone that one right uh the tampa bay buccaneers goodbye tampa bay In the playoffs, it's usually Brady the one to flex, but age is having its effects. Brady's got a good life, except no longer a wife or any of his money from FTX. (laughs) (laughs) It's kind of mean, but it is true. It's not. It's factual. You're just speaking facts. It is factual. It is. And I think Brady is going to be fine. Yeah. He's got a good life. Right. Outside of all that's happened this year. Right. 300 and some million from Fox coming up here. Yeah. So yeah, while I brought it to right. Brady, right. I think he can handle it. Right. Restart it from the beginning. Well, let's hear it one more time. Go. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it because maybe it won't even make the pod. I don't know if it was uh, going too hard right there. Um, Pete says it will It will make the pod. But that's it. That sums up the year. That was it. It was short Brady. and hard hitting right there. I thought there was going to be another two or three lines. I thought you were giving me a. You, were, it wet, you whetted your appetite Man, for more. that was good. That was good. That I was the only it. one where you were just like, keep going. Keep, keep going. going. <laughs> uh, yeah. So sorry. That could be it for Brady. We, we don't know. That, that will be a topic of conversation. But his team is done. So now it's officially time to get in the what the F will happen divisional yeah. round preview. So Cowboys at the uh, 49ers. Um, but, 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 but let's just start with at goat goat just right off the bat here yeah which team is more talented mm. cowboys yeah. or 49ers yeah that's the exciting thing about this game this is why this game is going to break the f- 
ratings meter on Sunday night. We should have got this game on NBC. Oh, uh, well, yeah, just I, this one. We like our game. But. We like our game. We do. I'm, I'm pumped. I'm going to be on the field with Patrick Mahomes. I'm not complaining about that. Um, but I, I do think that when you talk about freaky players at the skill positions and things like that, this is probably about as crazy as it can get in the NFL as that's concerned. There's, I know there's probably a few other matchups that I'm missing too, but you just go through it. One, you know, man, receivers, holy cow. I don't know. We just let's let's go through it. Let's go through it as a fun exercise right sure. here. Yeah. My initial thought right off the bat is the 49ers are freakier than Dallas. But it's not by like some long shot where I go, oh, it's not even close. Right? So receivers, I, I'm gonna give the edge to the 49ers. Yeah. I am, but it's not by anything extravagant. I'm gonna give the quarterback edge to the Dallas Cowboys. Sure. So there's that. Running back, oof. I'm going to give it the 49ers, too. Yeah, definitely. But, damn, I mean, I will say, once again, Tony Pollard is really damn good. Mm -hmm. And going back to that game there, too, I, I, I don't like saying this. I really like the guy. It, it, Zeke Elliott still gets the ball too much. Yeah. There was a few runs in that game where I go, if that's Tony Pollard there, that would have been a 25-yard gain. They got to stop just trying to appeal to the leader of their team and a guy yeah. that was a high pick. I and someone that maybe makes sense in the regular season, right? Keep these right guys now, we got 17 no. games, but no. now we're in the playoffs. We're in the playoffs. Like those 20 yards could be big this weekend where you just go, well, we wanted to get Zeke in because he's Zeke and we like him. And he's one of the leader of our team. Well, okay. Well, you're punting now because you like them. All right. Yeah. 13 um, carries, 27 yards for Zeke against yeah. the Bucks, 2.1 yards per carry. Right, right. Not um, great. Offensive line. Yeah. I'm going to go with the 49ers, but it's again, it's close. Mm -hmm. Tight end, we're going Niners. Again, it's close. Mm -hmm. it's not, like Dalton Schultz and Ferguson and them, they're damn good, mm -hmm. right? So I guess we've get, off of the side, we gave we gave 49ers everything except quarterback. I think right? so, yeah. Right. So it's seeming but, like it's seeming like the 49ers are going to win in a landslide. But if we're here. going, but, but if we're going on that, it's like okay, the 49ers got a 10, and the, the Niners. I mean, the Cowboys are like sure. a nine. You know what I mean? But it's, we're in the playoffs. We're That's in the what playoffs. we're going to see. You're right. right? Defense aside. D line, hmm. I'm gonna give it to the Niners, even if you put Micah Parsons on the D line. Yeah, wow. Which he is, and I'm counting him as that. Ooh. But it's 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 the other it's the other two freaks, and it's Armstead and then Javon Kinlaw. Yeah. that to put them over the edge. Man, linebacker, I'm gonna go with the 49ers oh, too. Man, I know. You're right. Secondary, Cowboys. Definitely corners. I'm going Cowboys. Okay. I like Traver Traverius Ward. He's really damn good. But, yeah, Utah, Deron Bland, Diggs, uh, that's a pretty damn good group. Safeties, I'm, it's pretty even. Yeah. Hufunga probably gives the edge of the 49ers. So, I guess we went through it, and the 49ers have the advantage here. Yeah. But I don't think it's anyone where I just go, oh, this is such a mismatch and a concern right here that they're blown out here. Again, this is the type of thing where right game plan – you know, how guys react to pressure, we can go, well, I don't know. They look just as good as them. So um, that's where it's, it's going to be interesting. And then when you throw in the fact that, hey, Dan Quinn does know the Shanahan offense a little bit. And Dallas does have a r ability to run the ball and ability to game plan specific, like we've talked about with the 49ers and their quarters coverage to where, hey, yeah, we can run the ball. Hey, safeties, you do have to help out. Oh, boom, there's Michael Gallup over the top or CeeDee Lip, right? So there's some things that play into their favor that way as well to where I go, yeah, that's why I'm expecting the, the ratings meter to break in this one because I think we could be sitting here in the fourth quarter. Michael Parsons goes around the edge. I don't give a shit if they got Trent Williams or McGlinchey or whoever. Yeah. He can go around the edge against anybody at any given time and get a strip sack fumble. I mean, one of those plays, and all of a sudden we're going, can you believe this? The Cowboys are going to upset the 49ers. Yeah. Now, I know the 49ers can do that on their side of the ball, too, and that's why this game is awesome to our at GOAT GOAT question so there. So we'll quickly look at both sides yeah. of the ball here. Let's start with the 49ers yeah. offense and kind of the Dallas defense. Um, Derek Weatherford writes into you. He goes, how is Brock Purdy going to do against the Dallas defense? Mm -hmm. Is Kyle going to continue to open up or stick with the run? Now, there was some pushback that we got when uh, when you were maybe downplaying the uh, the effect yeah. on uh, the game that Brock Purdy had, and mm -hmm. you were giving credit to Kyle Shanahan and that offense for opening some things up, and there was some pushback from the 49ers fans saying you were disrespecting Brock Purdy, who, we all, knew, who we all knew was going to be a great quarterback, even though he was the last pick of the draft. Um I think he's getting Brock Purdy's getting a lot of love out of course there. He is, yeah. 
you 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 went back and looked at some of the tape and and what we were talking about beforehand is that yeah the the 49ers offense and I don't think this is controversial opened some things up for the quarterbacks did so with it's, Jimmy it's Garoppolo awesome. right um but Brock Purdy is going to need to take advantage of what it gives him right even more against this Dallas Cowboys Definitely. defense correct like I showed you some plays against the Seahawks where I go listen look, I mean look what he did like this guy's open you got to throw this here right they get away with it against a team like the Seahawks because hey he missed the throw or he missed a read but the next play they run for 20 yards and get a first down we go oh God, who cares about that other play yeah. he missed right he'll have another opportunity here in a minute oh there's somebody open so it wasn't about disrespect to Brock Purdy he's doing a great job he's taking advantage of a lot of what's there to be had and he does have some good movement and make some plays. I, I wasn't trying to be a jerk there. Was I trying to say that Mac Jones is better than Brock Purdy? Absolutely. Let's not get that confused. I abs- absolutely. Okay? I'm sorry, everybody. Yes. All right? But that doesn't mean Brock Purdy can't be the starting quarterback and be really good for a long time. These are, you know, again, he's getting served up some plays right now in the Shanahan special category that you've heard me wax poetically about for three years. I showed you some of the plays. I mean, it, it's, it's amazing how open people are at times. And again, I'm not trying to disrespect Brock Purdy. I'm just trying to give everybody the reality of when the 49ers run the ball the way they're running the ball right yeah. now, and you have to bend to such a point where you have to avoid certain areas of the field because you just go, we need that extra guy down here to help in the run, or we got no chance – it lends itself, and then Shanahan's a creativity off of it to some plays that are just like, I, I'm sitting here at 42 going, man, I wish I could go play quarterback right there. Damn, just set up, be protected. There's a guy going across the field, yeah. beating his guy by 10 yards, 5 yards, whatever, right? And some guy would be here sitting with me talking about the game, be like, Chris Sims needs to take advantage of more of those opportunities <laughs> that Kyle Shanahan well, puts out le- there. He left some opportunities on the field early on in the football game that I showed you, right? Yeah. Right? So that in a game like this this week, you know, and as we get deeper, into the, you, you can't leave those you know, on the field. You can't. All, or all of a sudden, you're sitting there in a game that with the, a team that's better than the Seahawks, and you're going... <gasps> It's 20 to 17, and we're losing in the fourth quarter, right? Yeah. Where you go, well, if you hit those throws, you would have been up 31 to, you know, or, or, or 34 to 20, and we wouldn't be in this situation. It's been really damn good. The problem they're going to pose for the Dallas Cowboys is something we've talked about all year. Dallas did a little bit of what we talked about Monday and last week on the podcast. They said, we're not going to play run defense. We got to see it to believe it. Mm-hmm. That was pretty much what they did to the Buccaneers. Can't do that with the 49ers. Exactly right. That's where they're going to have to find the blend and something special. Now, where I give them a chance a little bit is Dan Quinn's ability to be – Dan Quinn's creative. You know, he does – he did get to see Shanahan's offense in person for two years in his face, right, learn some of that. So I would think he's got a feel for some of Shanahan's rules. And then I think when you take that into account of the – they got two corners who – you know, you take some cal- you can take some calculated risk with those two and go, yeah. hey, get on the island against Ayuk and Samuel. We, we like your matchup there, right? So that's another area I do look at. But the run game is going to be the real issue. That is going to be the issue. The 49ers are rare in the fact that they're a fast team, uh, but they have an offense and defensive line that's big and overpowering, you know, and – that's the one distinct advantage I feel like they have over Dallas, and mm-hmm. we've hit that all year. Dallas's lack of big people on that D-line. You're saying something that almost everyone would agree with and people have been saying for a long time. You run the ball as effectively as the 49ers have done. It does open up the passing game. I mean, it's one of the cliches of football. Definitely. Run to open up the passing game, make things a little bit easier there. Yeah, think about what that. you saw, right? Think about we hit on it on Monday a little bit, just the play actions and the deep in cuts and the crossers, and that was because nobody was in the middle of the field. So they basically said the free safety, he was in the deep middle, they would would just clear him out but then those middle linebackers Barton and everybody they're so up there because they're going what McCaffrey just ran down the sideline for 60 yards mm-hmm. I got to get over there and get in that gap oh gosh he kept it and now I can't get back to the middle to defend a crosser and he's wide open and I got a corner who's playing man who's just got no chance to cover that yep right so uh that's where again when you hear me talk about tactical or you know uh smart gambles as far as yeah i'll take a chance and blitz here right 
and and you just got a good feel for what might be common and they've what patterns. They've made in the past. They've you know they've broken, yes. but they've made those huge plays. They have. So maybe that's exactly right. Um, what they have to do. I can right. see the headline already. Chris Sims doubles down on his Mac Jones versus <laughs> Brock Purdy uh, take, which I uh, I enjoy. I'll enjoy seeing that on Twitter and then showing it to you if you haven't seen it just to fire you up. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I, once I, again. I cannot wait for this game though. So I maybe really it'll can. be maybe what the Cowboys offense will have to do. Maybe it'll. The pressure's going to be on them. I think so. To score some points I here. Think so so right. our guy, Mehmet305. Right. Do you think the Cowboys and their offensive line are going to be able to slow the 49ers pass rush and especially Nick Bosa? I do. I do think that's going to be one of the issues for the 49ers is I wouldn't be shocked if they have to blitz a little bit more than they would like in this football hmm. game. Yeah. Uh, I mean, again, Dallas for, for two reasons. One, they're good up front. Two... You know, Bosa and company in there, they're not going to just be able to tee off because they're going to have to worry about a real run game here. And they're going to go, wait, 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 wait. I, I can't just go up the field and go quarterback, quarterback, quarterback all the time. I got to be a little bit cognizant of my gap in the run game, and they might have somebody pulling to kick me out and all of that as well. And that's where it changes too. And then, of course, if there is a little success in the run game, and again, they don't need much, but if they get a little, that's going to make San Francisco uncomfortable. And Dallas is a good play action pass football team. They are. And then Dak Prescott, throughout his career, has been one of the best deep ball throwers in football. And we've shown a few times in our social media clips and stuff like that and how you can get some shots against 49ers. They yep. let those safeties be very aggressive. Yep. And that's, that's where, you know, I kind of look at the clues of the game. I, I, I hate to go back into, like, run game. Oh, whoever runs the ball the best, right, is going to win the game. And I, and, I, and I necessarily mean it, just run it effective enough to where it's going to make one of those defense really be in a really tough spot. One more thing. This is interesting from Plug and Play 16. Yeah. About the defensive coordinators. You've heard D'Amico Ryans, Dan Quinn, getting some interviews for mm-hmm. perhaps head coaching jobs. With both the 49ers and Cowboys DCs having multiple head coach interviews this week, says Plug and Play 16, any chance that will affect the game Sunday night? Maybe higher scoring. So I, I feel like you're already leaning towards maybe it being higher scoring regardless. But I am curious, you know, you do see that a lot this time of years. Coordinators are interviewing, checking in with other teams. You think that affects them at all? I do. I, it's a shame. I don't really like it. You know, first off, it's it's this is supposed to be like the crown jewel of our NFL season. Yeah. Why the f- can't we have all both the, all our organizations all in on the game? You know, I, I do wish, and I, I'm going to steal this from Florio because Florio's been saying this for a little while. I, I wish they would wait till after the Super Bowl that all this is over. Right, so like we you get can't this, have contact. Same way with free agents, right. right? You can't have contact right. with them until this certain time. Got to wait. Should be the same way with. Got to wait. Jesse, it's just it's not fair to the p- players on the 49ers. You know, it's not fair to the players on the Cowboys. It's not. And I'm not mad at D'Amico Ryan's or sure. or Dan Quinn. This is the system. Don't hate the player, hate the game, right? Yeah. It's it, it's messed up that way, but of course it does. You know, it's it, it, like Florio says when when like. D'Amico Ryan comes home on Thursday night. She's not going to go, how's that game plan going for the Cowboys? She's going to go, hey, how's that meeting preparation for that job that can give us $10 million a year going? And yeah. we can start to live a life of like that is awesome. Who are right? you? Right? You're his. You're D'Amico his. Ryan's wife. Okay. Right? She's not going to be like, hey, how's that Cowboy preparation going? <laughs> but she will be like, hey, yeah. are you ready for the interview totally. tomorrow that yeah. can change our life and buy us a bigger house and awesome yeah. cars and set up our family for a long time? Sure. Right? Right? She's going to be worried about that. I would and of be course, too if how I was would you? D'Amico and D'Amico Ryan's, Ryan's going to worry about that. Right? <laughs> yeah. That was my next point. Yeah. Exactly. So that's where I don't love that. I do think that affects it. You know, they're going to have good game plans. I understand that. But, you know, also, like I said to Florio the other day, like, Friday, Saturday, I've been a part of a lot of teams where, you know, okay, Friday, the week's kind of over, and the coaches go back, and they look at their overall game plan, and they notice something else. And they you know what? Hmm. Gosh, I was sitting around Friday, and we were kind of just having a relaxed film session with the coaches, and we, we saw this team do this, and it sparked an idea, right? I, I was... I was on like that with jo- – I'll never forget Josh McDaniels. I think I've told you the story. They were playing the Pittsburgh Steelers on a Monday night. He comes in Sunday evening, the night before the meeting, right? I mean, the night before the game, the night before the game meeting. Yeah. And he's got like eight new plays for us and checks. And I'm like, huh? What? I mean, you know, me and Kyle Horton both because we're still learning the New England system and the language and all that. And he's yeah. like, hey, I got these new plays. And we're like – what? Okay. Um, yeah, these are great. But they were awesome. Yeah. We tore the Steelers up. We lost the game. But when we got in those formations and those little plays, Josh McDaniels was right every time. So I do think that 
you know, hurts you there. I do. Uh, we did not see this game in the regular season. We did no. see it in the playoffs last year. Yeah. How much do you think that will affect? Well, I mean, I, how, I think how much can you carry over? There's I, some I carryover. Think there's some carryover. I think there's carryover to basic rules within the offense that you can figure out. And then if Dan Quinn's sitting there, he's going to go, oh, man. Man, last year when I got in this formation and did this, man, he did this to us every time. So he'll have something for you. The one thing I'll say, you know, with Shanahan is – and, and Dan Quinn, I, I would hope he knows this. If he doesn't, he needs to know it in a hurry. Man, self-scouting myself is huge this week against Kyle Shanahan. If you are, have any telltale of like, wait, when they get in, teams get in this formation, I do this, he's going to screw you over. Yeah. I thought that was one of the things that kind of hurt Seattle last week, right? Seattle had such a great game plan the second time around. They didn't have anything more to add to it. Sure. And I think Shanahan was a little bit like, wait, this is how they played us. That was a good game plan. I'm going to go all in on that. And if they throw me some curveballs, okay, I'll have some contingency plan. But I think Seattle went and went, we did good that second matchup. Let's just do what we do. And Kyle was like, good. Yep. You just do what you do. Yeah. Right. Oh, hey, there's Ayuk wide open over the middle. Ayuk wide over the middle. McCaffrey down the left sideline. And that's where Shanahan, that's where you got to, if you've been zigging all year with one formation, you got to zag when you play Shanahan. It is the final game of the four. We'll see that game Sunday night. The game on Saturday night is your New York Giants at the Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles' first game of the postseason after getting that bye in the super wild card weekend. We have seen this one twice in the regular season because yep. they are divisional opponents. Right. One only counted. You don't, you don't want to count the last one, week 18, because the Giants basically rested everyone. Right. Uh, although they did that and only won by, what, six points, 22-16. Yeah. Right. Uh, week 14, though, they were all trying. They are all out there. Yep. I, I, not everyone was out there. I guess Leonard there was Williams wasn't Williams, out there. And you did note that. They need him. So, But the Eagles won that game 48-22. to uh, You said to Pete and I on Monday when we were previewing these games, you go, this is basically the worst possible matchup for the Giants. Uh, Dad Robs writes to you says, you have consistently said that this Eagles team is much better than the Giants. Does your calculus change based on Sunday a lot, or is this still a situation where the Eagles should be comfortable? And he goes, you are both a Giants fan and an Eagles hater. <laughs> he goes, tongue-in-cheek. <laughs> so stay objective here. So, I like that, at Dad Robs. <laughs> so handicap this one for you. Is it still, in your mind, a very, very, very bad matchup for the Giants? It is, it is a very tough matchup for them. I'll say this. Watching back the Week 14 game a little yeah. closer, Yeah. right? I will say I feel better in one area for the Giants, right? The Giants defensive attack without Leonard Williams was right. They did a lot of good things in the football game and gave the Eagles offense some issues. Nothing was easy for the Eagles in that game. Nothing. Yeah. Um, seemed like it was. They had 48 points on the board at I, the end of the game. Yep. I know. I know. I know. I know it seems that way. Right. But so let's let's break it down a little bit. They have a good opening drive or whatever to score. Make it seven. Nothing. Then they get the ball. You know, a little later, they drive on a 91-yard drive, right? It was work. They threw a 41-yard touchdown pass on a fourth and five. Mm -hmm. So that means they went 11 plays for 50 yards, right? They're just to explain that a little bit. And this is sure. one of the most explosive teams we've seen all year in football, right? So that tells you the Giants didn't let anything big happen. They had to work for it. He had to scramble. He had to throw short passes. They had to run for four or five. That's the way they did it. And if you remember that fourth down... He throws to Devontae Smith up the sideline. It's the one Julian Love is like this. Hmm. He's, he then decides to like cradle catch it instead of go up and get it, and he lets Devontae Smith catch it, and, he run, and, and the Giants players hit each other, and he runs for a touchdown, right? So, again, I know that's a big play by the Eagles, but this, it's still encouraging to go, wait, wait, this is one of the better teams in football, and they had a plan, and, you know, I would go, mm, kind of got lucky on fourth down, really, yeah. to get the touchdown. Next drive, I believe, is the drop punt by the punter. Okay, so then they, they have the ball, like the 30-yard line going in. Mm -hmm. They had another drive in the third quarter, or maybe it was late second, where you know Boston Scott returned a kick for like 90 yards or 85 yards. So, you know, the stat line was not bad as far as the passing department. The Eagles ran the ball. They didn't really start to run the ball with a great effect as this in the second second half a little bit but I do think the Giants did some good things as far as having a feel for the offense and then you know having a little bit of a plan for the Jalen Hurts run game and stuff there to where I give them a fighting chance in that department I yeah. do 
Um, the argument for the Eagles yeah. is that they do that every game, right? They wear teams down, and then you got A.J. Brown, who can be one-on-one with anyone out there. And is maybe the best in the NFL at that, and you got yeah. Devontae Smith who can do that, that too. I mean, that's it's not a it's not a complicated formula. You're right. You know, I mean, again, I, I watch the Eagles and go, you know, the pass plays aren't. I don't go, oh wow, this is crazy. I've never seen this. They're they're fairly basic, but they don't need to be crazy because you have to bend to such a degree to play the run and stop the quarterback design run and all that that you really get compromised in coverage. And Wink did a good job of mixing up and, hey, shading the safety to A.J. Brown in some of those situations or fake shade him, but he's really playing single safety. You know, they did good things to kind of play with Jalen Hurts' head a little bit yeah. and give him some bastard looks. So the thing that stuck out to me most about your notes of yeah. this one is that in the third quarter, the Eagles just, you said, they said, F it, we're going to run it. And they were able to do that. But the Giants kind of bouncing between a five-man front yeah. and a four-man yeah. front. So. Right. So get into what, what you saw there. Yeah, well, the Eagles, are, early on in the game, it was as simple as if they're playing a five-man front, it usually means it's a single safety, and we're going to throw it. We'll throw it. Those are the kind of looks we want. No, that means we got a great look for A.J. or Devontae Smith. If they play four down, you know, more times than not, it was too deep, and they'd go, hey, we'll run it. Sure, okay, boom, 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 boom. The Giants, though, were doing a good job of kind of giving, you know, what I just said, bastard looks. Hey, it's a five-man front. Said blue 45 said, oh, wait, the guy on the end of the line of scrimmage, the linebacker dropped into coverage, it's a four man coverage, and now that's a two deep look, right? Mm-hmm. And they were going to throw it. And now you're like, oh, it's not the best to throw into this look. Hey, it's a four man front. You know, we're playing too deep, we're playing too deep. Hey, it's four man front. You know, blue 45, blue 45 said, hey, we're going to run the ball. Oh, somebody comes down and becomes the fifth man on the line of scrimmage right before the snap or blitzes off the edge or whatever that way. So they were very good with messing with the Eagles in that department right there. To where, yeah, I think the Eagles will maybe have to have some plays where, hey, just we're going to call it and run it. We're not going to try to be right all the time. Let's just go with plays that we know work against two safety, five-man front, four-man front, and whatever that we know we're really good at mm-hmm. and just go from there. And slowly but surely, they're gonna, if they do that, they'll get the Giants to dictate and line up you know, quicker to where they get the looks they want and not you know, so much dancing around. So if the Eagles go into this game, and they they do say that we're big. We got a good offensive line. I don't know about Lane Johnson. Do we, do we know? Is he is he back? Is he going to play? I think he is going to give it a go this week. The last I heard, but I haven't heard anything here in the last day. He said he's going to play. Says Pete in my ear. Um, what if they What if they just go? We're just gonna we're gonna run. We're gonna run. We're gonna run the C gap. We're gonna run the D gap. Yeah, We've been you able saw to do it I wrote before. that right. Well, well, yeah, I did see that. Yeah. You, you sent your notes. I of course, <laughs> I read them over. Yeah. Um, why is that? Why does that stick out to you? If they decide to do that and just try to gash him in the run game. Well, it's a little bit like we talked about last week. One, like the only two people you try to avoid on the Giants, enemy number one is Big Butt, two-time winner Dexter mm-hmm. Lawrence. Mm-hmm. Sexy Dexy is on fire right now. And trust me, they're telling him right now, if you don't dominate, we can't win the game. So he's hearing it. He's getting the poker on his ass, that big ass that you like so much, <laughs> consistently right now. Yeah. Same with Leonard Williams. Um, the Giants, though, you know, the Eagles' offense, offensive tackles are awesome. They're huge. Uh, they, they can overpower Thibodeau in that group on the outside edge there. Mm. Right. And then, like I said last week, Jalen Smith, you know, um, 41 McDonald. I always want to mess up his name. I don't know what it is. They're not extremely athletic to where those edge runs are hard for them to get there and make the play in time. So that's where I think that there's some 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 meat on the bone there for the Eagles and and them running. And, And as you've always heard me say, they do fall a little bit too much in the trap of being pass happy. Oh, they gave us a pass look. We're just going to throw it. All right. Well, you know, teams are, you know, sometimes they give you the pass look knowing like, oh, wait, now we can drop a guy out and do that and bastard. And your bread and butter is run. And when you start yeah. to run the ball, everything else op- opens up. So it could be an issue for the Giants. Could have a hard time slowing down that run game, the one-on-one balls. Um, to- I worry a little bit like the Seahawks, right, what we just talked about with the 49ers, that – they don't have another wrinkle to add to what they did in that Week 14 matchup. Yeah. So now Philadelphia's going to be like, hey, this is what they're going to do. This is how they're going to play us. And we got a good feel for it, and we'll have something for you there. All right, so Danny Dimes just goes off for 300 yards and four touchdowns. Add another two on the ground. Uh, Philly fan 1001 is uh, a little angry 
at his defense. Philly fans n- notoriously unpleased with their with their team, even when they're uh, as good as the Eagles are right now. He goes, uh, will Jonathan Gannon continue to have the Eagles elite corners play 1,000 yards off the line of scrimmage so that Danny Dimes can get easy completions all game? Why does JG do this? Does he want us to lose? I know. It, it is. <laughs> I, I hear you. Hey, Jonathan Gannon's made a lot of adjustments, you know, through his two years in Philadelphia. And his defense is, it is more creative. And, you know, last year, remember, we were kind of talking about, hey, they're too simple. And remember, we were talking about all the quarterbacks who were going like 28 for 31 against the Eagles, right? That's changed. I, I feel like the Eagles fans haven't got off that. I, I, I want to go like, you guys know you got the number two defense in football, right? We, we, are we aware of that? Are we, are we seeing things the right way? And you got the best pass rush in football. So, that's why they're just going. Okay, well, we'll, we'll play off. We're, we're not going to play you bump, so you can just throw some jump ball bullshit throw, right. and our guy trips or you get a pass interference. Right? They're going to go. No, no. You know, hey, if you want to go five yards at a time, that's fine. But we believe we're going to hit you or do something to make you mess up at some point, get a hit on the ball, and we think you'll get frustrated and wait for some passes down the field, and our pass rush will get there. And I think that's why they play it that way. So. He has expanded the way he plays in that way. And and he's great at exposing protections, right? That's another thing he's very good at, let alone that's another issue for the Giants in this game. The tackles had a hard time with Reddick and Sweat, for sure. But he's great at finding ways to pressure your scheme, let alone he's got good guys up front. I mean, again, they had 70 sacks this year, 70. The next closest team was 55 that's pretty phenomenal in the NFL. And then, you know, we also have to do this with the Eagles and their defense if we're going to have this conversation. A little bit like the Chiefs. Teams play the Eagles, and they know they got to throw the kitchen sink at their defense because they go, I don't think we're going to be able to stop their offense. They're going to score 27 on us, mm-hmm. right? So they get everybody's, like, most aggressive best shots where guy, they go into games going – we haven't run this play all year, but we got to run it against them because we got to make some plays and we just got to do it or we're not going to be able to upset the Eagles, right? right. And then people got to remember that too. So uh, I wouldn't play bump and do that Yeah. until you've like, okay, I'm getting worn out. But I wouldn't want to give Darius Slayton and Hodgins a chance to just beat you around the edge and all of a sudden Danny throws a fade and it's a 60-yard bomb. Yeah. Oh. Because they didn't, you noted in your notes the first time they played, week 14, Eagles didn't really show any fear of the Giants wide receivers. But as a group, they have played better, the Giants wide receivers here lately. I, I think you have to approach them differently. And they were in the face of the Giants receivers early on. Because that's during that part, of, you know, the Giants were just maybe coming in their own a little bit there. Yeah. But they still weren't in, wait, we can pr- protect well enough quite yet. Yeah, I think the receivers were kind of just hitting a point where we're going, damn, these guys are pretty good. This is starting to look pretty good here. They weren't there. Yeah, so they had no fear of that. And then they had no fear of it a little because of what our question is there. I think they said, wait, they're not going to be able to block us, so let's not let them throw the quick throw. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're going to have to evaluate this week. The Giants are better up front right now. And, again, the Eagles, to our man, Dad, Brad Rob's question, are clearly better. You know, the one reason, hey, it's – the Giants know how they play. They've gotten better at how they've played, and they've expanded their offense where they've gotten better at pass protection and they've gotten a little bit better at the drop back, aggressive passing game here since the last time they played them. Yeah. To where I give that's where I at least give them a fighting chance. All right. So overall, the Giants' offense maybe has gotten better from that week 14 game. But if you were to say what side, if you're the Giants, do you think they have a better chance of containing the Eagles offense or a better chance of scoring some points on that Eagles defense? I think it's the better chance of containing the offense. Really? Yeah. You have some concerns with the Giants offense being able to function. I I think the Giants like I think it's going to be hard and I think it's yeah I think that they need their defense to hold them around 20 right which is very hard to do. Yeah. Um, Because I I just I don't see it I don't, I don't see it, and I, I worry about that. Now, here, here's another little wrinkle as far as what was missing the first time around, too, that could help out the Giants' defense. With no Leonard Williams, right, it made them move Jihad Ward down to defensive tackle. Okay. You know, I think they have a chance in this one 
if they're all healthy here, you could put Thibodeau on the outside, Leonard Williams at the bare front D tackle DN. You can put Ellis, big 71, who's 345 pounds at nose tackle. Put Dexter Lawrence at the other bare front in between the guard and tackle. And then have Ahad Ward as the outside linebacker, which he's done for the most of the year. He's the biggest outside linebacker in football. Yeah. That could at least give them some size and maybe not get overly overpowered in the run game to where I give him a chance there. Right. All right. You ready for uh, – Well, nope. Hold on. Let me just make sure. Let me just make sure no, 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 one no, we're more not moving thing. On from the, we're not moving I on from this game yet. We're not moving on from this game yet. Cool, cool, cool. I was cool. just seeing if you were ready for two stats in a life. Oh, you're yes. ready to be quizzed. I am. I am. Let's this is go. on your Giants here now. Yeah, no, we're not trying to get to our next game. we got plenty of time here. Kristen, right? we got the booth uh, locked off until like 3 p.m., 4 p.m. Um, no, she says no. She's cutting the feed right now. Uh, <laughs> Giants, two stats in a lie. As you review your notes here, if you're just joining us for the first time, two of these stats are true. One is a lie. Chris is going to identify which is the lie. Of the remaining playoff teams offensively, the Giants were worst on third down in the regular season. Of the remaining playoff teams, the Giants were worst at stopping opponents on third down in the regular season. Of the remaining playoff teams, the Giants had the worst yards per play given up so those are all would be bad news if those were all true good thing for you and pete and morgan is that one of them is false so one of them they're not the worst of the remaining well, playoff teams let's talk this out don't uncover these pete um i don't the third down the giants i think are good offensively or defensively, defensively the second one right of remaining play the general, worse at stopping opponents third down. So I'm, you think that one is false? No. Uh, yes, I think. Uh, wait, so what am I trying to find? A lie here? Yeah, I'm, I'm all confused here. <laughs> yeah, which one is? If you don't think that one's true, then you've identified what you think is the lie. Oh. You think that they are better? Yes. At stopping teams on third that, down, and you are exactly right. Thank you. You are absolutely you right. right. In fact, they are the best of the remaining playoff teams at stopping so. teams on third down. They're fifth in the NFL behind Washington, Denver, Tennessee, and Baltimore. So when it is crunch time on third down, Wink Martindale and that defense, pretty good. He's a pain in the ass. Right. You know, that, that's and that's where, again, it, it's if I'm the Eagles, I'm running the ball a lot early on. I'm going to run it. I'm going to call their bluff. I'm not going to let third downs. Yeah, I'm just not going to let Wink just trick me all the time. Oh, it's five man front, but it became a four man. Oh, it's a four man front, but they bought they blitz six, right? You know, I mean, it's just that's what he's great at. And if you get pass happy, he likes that because then he's just going, oh, I could blitz this guy, drop this guy, blitz that guy, drop that guy. I kind of have a feel for your offense. I'll have guys dropping in the right area, mm -hmm. right? And uh, yeah, th that's where they're they're a handful. And that's where they were a handful in this one. I don't even know what they were on third down, the Eagles. Let's, let's look. They were 6 of 11, which is probably low for them. Uh, but, yeah, they gave them issues. Even some of the ones they converted, I, I think Jalen Hurts scrambled one time. It was never easy. So yeah. uh, they are a handful on third down. All right. Before we move on to the Big Butt Awards, Chris has one more thing that he wants to talk about with this game. I think we hit most of your notes. I think you're this. right. I think, I think we did, too. Um, I wouldn't move on from a game if I knew they were good. No, enough. I think the big thing I want to say is here, here's the, the Giants. Again, I, I, I can't. I wouldn't trust the drop back pass game early on. You know, they got away with that. And that was fine against the Vikings. That was the Vikings. That's the reason there's a reason they were the worst defense in football. But, you know, the, the Eagles are so fast flow and they're so good and dominant, right? That's where I got into like boo the First off, I don't think Daniel Jones was completely healthy in that football game. I, again, the quarterback design run, I think, is something to look for. Mm -hmm. But the boots, they had success. You know, the, uh, you know, the, the, Fake to fake to Saquon read options or boots off of that. Also, just like some of, I, I think they need to have plays where it's like a design cutback. You know, that would be the other thing that like toss cutback. Yeah. You see the 49ers do that sometimes. They get so good at the toss crack that they toss it right, and you think, oh, here comes the toss, but he's really looking to cut it back all the way across the formation. Yeah. To me, that's how you take advantage of these over aggressive defenses. And they did double move them a few times in the game, and they had it. They just couldn't. 
protect long enough for him to throw the ball. So if they can find a way to keep an extra guy in the block and give him some time, you know that that's where I look at it and go, maybe they have a chance to make some plays on this awesome sure. Eagles defense. Pete notes in my ear, just two designed runs in that game against the Eagles yeah. For, yeah. for Daniel Jones. Maybe him not being 100% had something to do with that, and he has been playing as well as he has played in his entire career probably right now. Yes, I knew there was going to be one, one more thing. thing. It's your team. Of yeah. course it's going to be one well, more yeah, thing. Well, the other thing the Eagles did too, they, they played – to our point with our guy that we just talked about a minute ago da- uh, at Dad Robs, or I think it was him that said that. Uh, no, no, Robs. no, it was at Philly Fan One One Thousand One. Okay. He he, the Eagles played defenses where they basically said you're not going to have enough time to throw it, and we've been watching film, and you kill everybody with these five and eight yard throws mm-hmm. to where they that's really they had some plays where they calculated gamble and said we're just going to play everybody in that range. And damn, if they call a post route, I hope our guy can cover him, right? Yeah. You or know? we get the sack. Or we get know? the sack in time. Yeah. That's kind of that's what they played a little bit. They took some calculated risk that way. And like I said, if they can protect, there was some chances for some shots down the field. All right, I'm done. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, Well, you might actually have a chance to talk a little bit more about them because before we get to our Jaguars and Chiefs, the game on NBC, it is time for the Big Butt Awards of the playoff week. Oh, I love it. It is that time. Big Butt of the Weekend. The Big Butt of the Weekend. Time to give some love to these big guys. Some touches. A couple sacks, forced fumble. He's a butt-king superstar. (laughs) Woo! Thank Give you. it to him, Ahmed. One butt cheek. And this is why you're the big butt expert of the world right now. And maybe the big butt of the world right now in the NFL is our winner. Apparently. Of Super Wild Card Weekend Defensive Tackle Big Butt of the Week. Dexter Lawrence has won it for the third time this year. Had two in the regular season, one in the playoffs, seven pressures tied for the most among defensive tackles with his teammate Leonard Williams. So they were dominating that Vikings offensive line. Yep. Four quarterback hits were the most. Uh, I saw a tweet somewhere that said, like, Dexter had maybe four pressures on that final drive. And so when the game mattered the most, he was he was providing the pressure to Kirk Cousins. Definitely. He popped out to me the whole game. I mean, I, Pete, I'll tell you, as we were watching the game Sunday in the NBC viewing room, I was just like, oh, my gosh, Dexter. Holy cow. He's just pushing people everywhere. It, it was you know, it was phenomenal. The stats aren't even going to tell the whole story. And and what you said there at the end, he got pressure on the nothing, the passer play, right? Yep. The play before the last play, he got pressure where Kirk Cousins had to throw it early at Osborne on the crossing route where the defender made a good play and knocked the ball down. And you go, oh, I wish he would have let him a little bit. Mm-hmm. But he had to throw it a little early there. And that fourth down, again, I went back and watched that. He had to throw it. He's about yeah. to get hit. Dexter is like this as he's throwing the ball. He's about to swallow him up. And he didn't have time to do anything else. Uh, so, yeah, he was big in big moments, too. Uh, for defensive uh, mm, end. Another edge. repeater. Another repeater. A team that's no longer playing, but he had a great game. Jalen Phillips of the Dolphins, congratulations. You've won it for the second time. First in the postseason, he had seven pressures, Mm. tied for the most among edge players with Josh Allen from the Jacksonville Jaguars. Had seven tackles the most. He's just very active. His snaps, he played 63 snaps. That was the most. I'm always biased towards that. He's a great player. Great player. And he, he, I think he and... uh, Bradley Chubb, I think they talked to Chubb at the end of the game. They're like, we're, we're going to work together. We're going to be the most dominant pair. We're, we're going to come out next year leveling up. And they're already scary with Christian uh, Wilkins. Wilkins. Right. Raekwon in Davis middle. in the middle. Siler. I mean, they, they, got, they got a crew there for sure. Phillips is on the verge of being a superstar. At least that's the way it looks like to me. He's, he's getting to that point where you go, uh, he's almost unblockable some games. Or he's, you, you got to have somebody there to chip him or something. It's it's special, and it's not just pass rush, to, to your point there. He's awesome against the run. He's like Wilkins, too, where he hustles everywhere. You're like, yeah. damn, did he make that tackle 12 yeah. yards down the field? That, that really is the cool thing to watch about the Dolphins it is. is that the hustle factor on that defense. Definitely. They bring it. And uh, Chubb, you know, his year was a little underwhelming, yeah. so hopefully he can, you know. And he yeah, already got paid, right? After that, he got paid, too. I know. That, yeah. That's what I. That's the only question I have is, like, are they going to be able to pay all these guys? I, 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 I'm, I worry about that as well. I mean, Wilkins is going to get paid here soon. Um, yeah, they can wait on Jalen Phillips another – two years probably but yeah it's uh Jalen Phillips to me if like we had one guy where you made me pick out 
and I don't even know what he ended up with the year. I think he was close to double digit sacks. But uh, let's see, I'll, I'll pull it up. He's one guy where I'd go if you could get one guy that comes out of nowhere and maybe is the sack leader in the NFL next year. Yeah, he would. He Uche from the from the New England Patriots. Those are two guys right off the bat that I go watch out. They could be 14, 15 sacks. He had seven sacks. Pete seven saying. sacks. All right, 25 QB hits. Wow, yeah. He doesn't have a whole lot of tread on the on the tires either because he tweeted out something about he played in 20 games in college. He's already yeah. played in 35-plus in the NFL. Right. He was there at UCLA in Miami, a mid-first-round pick. A little concussion issue. Is that what it was? It was. That's why he left. He sat out of football for a year in college because they. I think he got two pretty bad ones in the same year, hmm. and they were a little worried about him, so he didn't play for a year. Then he was like, damn, I missed this, and went to Miami, and it all took off again. Well, congratulations. You've yeah. reached the pinnacle. You have won the big butt of the week award two times one time in the postseason there's phillips and Kristen. good job we did get a little bit of a shot little of bit the, of a, a side rear. action for Jalen. yeah yeah yep. and, yep. and our screen's not big enough to put dexter's butt in so there had, so we just had to go we with had to go shot. with a smile which is <laughs> it's almost not big enough for oh, that it's a man. big smile yeah he's so, gonna get paid too here holy cow congratulations to both of those guys one will continue <laughs> playing on now to our game that we will see here on nbc chris is about to hop on a plane go talk to andy reed that's pretty cool. I'm glad. It is cool. I'm I'm, I'm very glad. I little mean, little birdie <laughs> told me that Andy Reid uh, requested you. That's uh, what I, it's what I heard. It is a it's really it's awesome. I mean, I want to talk to him. <laughs> yeah, I want to set him straight. He said <laughs> this about my offense last year. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm gonna tell <laughs> oh, him yeah. he's wrong. Oh yeah, it's true. It could be a bad thing. <laughs> it could be a bad Who knows? thing too. I'm going to the principal's <laughs> office. Um, I love Andy Reid. The interactions I've always had with him are have been phenomenal. And he just couldn't be a nicer guy. Loves talking ball. Uh, I am. I'm excited to interview him, pick his brain a little bit, hopefully get to see a little practice you know, tomorrow, get to watch the Magic Man at work in practice. That'll be cool in my home. So, yeah, I'm excited to go out what there. What are the things you want to find out the most from Andy Reid, you think? Hmm. Like, what are you curious about? Well, always curious about his ability to blend personalities together. I think he's a magic, m- m- magic man, right? Just even this year. Let's just think, oh, Kadarius Tony, he's such a pain in the ass. And, yeah. Oh, Juju Smith-Schuster, all he worries about is dancing on the logo before the game. And like, right? And we don't hear a peep when they go there. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's just like, hey, hey, we're all having fun and we're winning games and everybody's happy, right? I think he's amazing at that. I, I, I'm dying. I'm going to – this is definitely going to be part of the interview. It's just, you know, the offense around – Mahomes, where, where, where did it come from? How, what was the jump off point? You know, again, when that started in 2019, you know, when did you start to go, wait, I could just have this guy go that way and this guy go that way and he'll throw it. And this will be amazing. And, you know, I think everybody in football was like, I don't know how they're reading these plays. What the hell? How did you come up with it? Those are yeah. some of the things I'm very intrigued by, let alone his magic touch of like Mahomes is obviously coachable, very coachable. And that can be rare for guys that are like him because they just go, wait, I'm f- awesome. So I'm going to get it done. Don't worry, coach. I got mm-hmm. it, right? Mm-hmm. But coachable made the right adjustments from last year to this year. We talked about it a ton this year, right? Him playing by the book, being better in the pocket. Mechanics are perfect. Balls coming out of his hands, amazing. But how do you keep that blend of like, hey, let the system work for you, but I don't want to make you a robot and still be Patrick Mahomes and make yeah. magic happen? Yeah. Those are things I'm interested to hear him answer a little bit. You're going to ask him if he thinks they're better offensively without Tyree. Kill. Ooh, a hundred percent. I'm yeah, going there. I know. I he'll give me some coach answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he'll probably want to talk up the players he does have. I would too, think so. so. I would think so. And then, and of course, it, it gives more love to his coaches. Yeah. And you know, his quarterback to go. Yeah, but they're good. And our coaches came up with their proper game plan. So maybe he will give me some some something there. All right. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to this game too because I think the Jacksonville Jaguars. All of a sudden, here they come. Yeah. It's like my Detroit Lions. I you know. know, a team that's been bad for a long time. It's 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 even better when they get good because especially when there's a young, exciting player like Trevor Lawrence. Uh, but a lot of it will hinge on, yes, can they slow down that offense right. from Andy Reid, Eric Bieniemy, Patrick Mahomes. And so they played once before this regular season. It was a, what was it, 27-17 victory? Was that yeah. the final score? Weird game. It was a 20 nothing game early. and then Could have uh, been more than that. Could have been 30 to nothing. So let's start with this. Then it could have been 20 to 17. Like, yeah. you know, it was a, one of those games where I know we came in on a Monday and went, 
that was an annoying game from Kansas City, right? Where you go, they really never got stopped. They just got complacent. They drop a pass. They fumble, right? It wasn't like I was like, oh, my gosh. The Jaguars, they physically just were all over them, and their scheme was all over them. Yeah, It was like, yeah, they scored 27. If they were really on their game, they probably should have scored 41, maybe more. Yeah, they, Mahomes threw for 330 yards and four touchdowns. They ran for 155 on the ground. I mean, they almost had 500 yards of total that, offense. That's what I'm saying. In this yeah. game. So can the Jaguars' defense slow them down? So let's take a look back. Week yeah. 10, uh, they had to apply some pressure uh, at times. They, they chose to under pressure. Um, this is what Mahomes did. He was six of ten. I was just thirty-two percent of the dropbacks. And I, I don't even think that's interception. Blitz. I think that's just pressure. Got it. Just pressure. Yeah. So because I don't, even they, the they, I don't. They I was gonna say they only blitzed them. Pete. I was gonna say once, twice. I did yeah. not remember blitzes in the game. So if, that was just getting pressure. When they didn't get pressure, he was twenty to twenty-five, two hundred and fifty-nine yards, and all four of those touchdowns. Can they make him uncomfortable? Blitz or no blitz? And should they even blitz? What do you What do you think? When you look back at that tape, it looked easy for the Chiefs. You've already said that they probably should have scored more. So is it is it trouble trouble time for the Jacksonville Jaguars? I, I don't want to say trouble, but they pose some problems. They there's no question they have to play it differently. Okay, that that's the the main headline. They can't go in with that game plan and go, oh yeah, all right. So the the first thing is to that graphic right there. Their front four just could not get there. So I do think they're going to have to figure out some ways to stress the protection out a little bit. Yeah, you know, You've heard me say for a while now. I mean, that's the Chiefs are one of the best pass-protecting O-lines in football. They got a left tackle that's phenomenal. They got arguably the best pass-protecting guard in football in Tooney, right? We know the center is awesome. Uh, they're, they're good across the board there. And I think that's a problem. So they're going to have to figure out some ways to, whether it's blitz one, drop one, drop one, blitz two, whatever. They got to do something there. Yeah. Then next gen stats. Yeah. Per Matt Casey says only one blitz in the one game. One blitz. So. so there you go. Okay. And then when you get into the coverage, they tried to play zone early on. The Jacksonville likes to play zone. That's what they want to do, and they tried to do that, but they they messed up some things and. They messed up, as we've talked about a lot, with a lot of teams that play Kansas City. you got to be ready for crossers, right? The deep crossers, the shallow crossers. How are we going to pass them off? What's our game plan? You can't expect that your guy playing man-to-man is going to be able to cover a guy that runs 4-3 across the field for 50 yards, right? Yeah. So, you know, they messed up some of that stuff, like, habitually, right, where you just went, whoa. I mean, these are gashes in the pass game. And really, he probably had a chance at a few more as well. So... You know, the one thing that jumped at me as the game went on, and I think they messed up a few of those things, and then, again, him playing by the book and letting the system work for him, they did start to get into a little bit more of an aggressive coverage as the game went on. I do think they can play some man-to-man against this football team. First off, they have the, you know, you know me, they have one of the best corners in football that nobody knows about. Tyson Campbell can match up with just about anybody. You know, and he's their one guy that they will go, hey, you play man and we'll do this and that with this and over there. But I think this is one where they could do it across the board a little bit more and play within that. And, of course, yeah, you got to protect the crossers and all that again, we know. Yeah. And, and little pick plays, that was another thing. They went to the man-to-man, and then they got picked a few times. So now they got to see it, and hopefully they play it the right way. And, again, this is a young team who's still learning rules and doing stuff that way. But the approach has certainly got to be different on that side of the ball. We have seen some teams play man effectively versus we Kansas have. City. I'm not mistaken, right? It was the no, no, Sunday night right. game, Tennessee. It was like we were kind we of surprised. We came away and we went, man, that might have been the first game they needed Tyree Kill. Remember we said that the That's next right. day, right? Yeah. We were like, it was the first game ever where I went, uh, they missed Tyree Kill here. Yeah. Yeah. There are there are there have been some teams that have played that way against them. Um because he's become amazing at zone. It's you know, it's it's just you can't be right. He's he's too good. He's too smart. You know he can buy just enough time to let the zone spread out a little bit more, and he picks it away there. So, you know that that's going to be the interesting thing. Now the interesting thing with the Chiefs, though, oh. is it's on that matchup of their offense versus their, that was just when they were starting to really become a run team. They're better at running now than they were then. The Chiefs, yeah. Mm. You know they're 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 truly a pretty balanced you know sixty forty pass run team yeah. now, where this. 
point of the year, I bet you it was still, you know, 75, 25. This might have been the coming this out party. Been, for I think it was kind Pacheco of the and... coming out party of like, wait, are they really going to get on the center here and put two tight ends and run the ball like this a little bit? Yeah. I remember they did it, Cohen, thinking like, well, why are they wasting their time? They know they're not going to really do this as the year goes on. And they did. And that's where they're going to pose some problems here for Jacksonville as well. All right. So then it's on the shoulders of Trevor Lawrence, perhaps, again, to figure out a way to get that offense cooking before they fall down 27 to nothing or like in this game fall down 20 to nothing at least they've proven it in the in the postseason so um how do they how do they try to keep up point wise offensively against this Chiefs defense which is still pretty good I uh, know I'm not convinced they can run I'm not convinced uh, I will say like as much as you know you heard me last week their big old line I think posed some problems for the Chargers D line right I think we saw that in the second half I mean ATN ran for what 120 last week you know, yeah. even in the second half, they still smashed it up in there, and he was getting big runs. Kansas City's a different animal there. Kansas City, I think their D line is is a tough matchup for Jacksonville because they're they're like one of those rare teams that has size, but their three hundred and forty pound guy is like also the most athletic guy on the defense, right? Yeah. You know, or any defense. He's 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 one of those guys. You're like, is he really three forty and can move like that? So. Uh, I do think it's going to come down to Trevor Lawrence and his ability to throw the football. And I think they're going to have to attack them a little bit more this time around. Early on in the game, they had some shots down the field. He had one where Trevor missed the throw. He's a little late. They batted a ball down. You know, There was a few other times where they got in some formations and Spagnuolo came up with the right blitz, mm -hmm. and he, he had to get the ball out quicker than he wanted to. And you go, ooh, there's going to be something there. I think the big thing is, you know, they let Kansas City, like we've talked about with other teams sometimes, they never back them off. They let them play downhill, and it was screens and speed sweeps and little wide receiver short passes and all that. And Kansas City just went, you know, all over it, and, and they, were, they were great at it. The other aspect I think that has to change a little bit is they got into some of these formations of, like, people are closer to the offensive line, condensed formations, tighter splits, bunches and all that, which is yeah. what they do. But it can be scary against a guy like Spags, right? Just think about it this way. You're a quarterback, right? Here we are. I got three receivers and a bunch to the left and my tight end to the right, right? Hey, there's all these guys covering over here, right? They're the close. You can't tell who's blitzing, right? Safety can play back over the top and you go, oh, it looks like two man. I think I'm okay. And all of a sudden, blue 45, blue 45, said, and all of a sudden you start, oh, wait, two guys are coming off the edge, and that safety's coming down, and the linebacker who's up in the A-gap right. is cheated and going to run over there, and now I'm screwed in my protection, and I didn't have enough time to see it develop because we were so condensed and it was right there. I'd be a little scared with that with Spags. That's interesting. I want to say spread them out more. Where's the spread out saying. by the sideline? If that guy's blitzing, he's got to run a marathon to he's get He's got to the run a marathon, and you see it as a quarterback because yeah. it's like he has to show it. He's not going to get here in time if he wants to blitz out there fine blitz i'll still have enough time to take five steps and throw a ball down the field yeah right so those defenses know that they oh wait i'm a, i gotta start getting in there if i want to actually get there oh wait i see it hey oh hey check to the screen check to the max protect whatever and he does have the freedom to do that we saw him throw that long touchdown to uh zay jones against yeah. the chargers and that would be one thing i would say they need to adjust so you do think though that if the jaguars just look at this tape and go okay this is how they played us this is how we can beat it they might miss a few things that have changed with the Chiefs defense since then too I didn't know that in you your, know in your right notes here. right the Chiefs were a little bit that was like we had talked about you know I think a week or two before that where it was like it was either blitz or the crazy disguise make it look like bits and we dropped the Tampa too right yeah this was one of the first games where they started to go wait I think our young guys can hey let's double a guy here right or, and then we'll figure it out on the over there or let's double two guys on the eight yard line it's a young defense they've it, trusted those guys more as the years gone on they have trusted them as the more guy they've gotten more creative and here's another thing that i know we just talked about with the the other side of the matchup i do think kansas city's going to come away from watching that game and then even watching last week and go we can man these guys up too. Hmm. We there's you know there's a one issue with Jacksonville. I like everything. They don't have a guy that scares you to run deep, right? They don't. That's where Calvin Ridley, who you know they have on their team, and I think people forget, will be awesome for them next year, yeah. right? But they don't have that guy. Kind of heard Chris Collinsworth. I think he brought that up in the telecast the other night, and 
these are, you know, three corners and, and KC that can really run, and they're comfortable in man. And I could see them doing that. There's, Spags definitely had a good feel for how Doug Peterson calls his protections. That was one thing that was apparent to me. And that's where Doug is going to have to be careful to switch it up a little bit. And, you know, I think he had a good feel for, oh, wait, the back's offset to the left. They're going to slide to the right, right? Or the back's offset to the right. They're going to slide to the left. You know, stuff like that. That's what I'm talking about, where he might have to change that and go, hey, no, I got the back offset to the right, and I usually slide to the left, but I'm going to have the back offset to the right, and we're going to slide to the right, and I'm going to have the back to cross the formation if somebody blitzes from that side. Things like that can go a long way in a matchup like this against Spags, who's great at finding tendencies and, and exposing them too. So it sounds like you have a high degree of confidence in the two one seeds, as we should. They were the one seeds. Yeah. Uh, but we have seen in the past where, you know, the week off, sometimes you come out a little sluggish. I know. And Tennessee last year didn't handle, mm-hmm. I don't know how elite they were. But, I mean, the Chiefs and the Eagles are, have been elite teams for a big chunk of yeah. this year. It's so just, It's an easy, amazing psychology experiment, this one. I don't know what the uh, what the spreads are in both. I would imagine they're both pretty I even significant. Yet. Are they either, any so, of them double digits? Let me ask you. Like, yeah. with, the, with, the, with the Jaguars. Okay. You know, yeah, they... They won a game. They won a playoff game. They played against a team who's never been to the playoffs either, right? Yeah. They have been to Kansas City this year and know mm-hmm. what to expect to a degree. Yep. Do you think that allows them to play free and cut it loose? Or the other side of this is this to me. They have no freaking clue what football, playoff, NFL football intensity is really about yet until they see it this weekend. Yeah. And they're going to go, whoa. So this is what a Super Bowl team plays like in a divisional round? Yeah. Right? Or does you know, does that happen with the fans being even crazier and you know Mahomes and company are gonna be sharp and ready to go and on their A game? I think the Chiefs are on a mission, you know. So is it loose free Jaguars or is it, oh shit, this is a whole different type of intensity we're not ready for that that's to me something i'm still filtering out in my brain a little bit that i will be thinking about over the next few days and i'll even be looking at that yeah. in pregame warm-ups so it's a, jags are eight and a half dogs point dogs mm. and the giants seven and a half i would have more confidence in the chiefs blowing out the jags you would I think yeah the only reason because I, I don't think that like you mentioned like the matchup for the giants is not good against the the eagles but the Eagles are kind of somewhat new to this dominant in the NFL thing. I hear you. You know, I hear you, it yeah. kind of feel like that because what it was just last year they were the seven seed against yeah. Tom Brady and the Bucks and they got blown out of the water. Right, exactly. From the right. get go in that yeah. game. So yeah, yeah I, I, I don't know. I'm interested to see how the Eagles handle it. I, feel I know like the you're right. Being the top of the mountain, they kind haven't of. played great at the end of the year. Yeah, exactly. This yeah. is where it's how healthy is Jalen Hurts. Right. That's where the psychology of I love this weekend because of all that stuff you're talking about. And uh, yeah, like I've said, I said, I think the Chiefs are. The Chiefs are a highly mo- – I would be shocked if the Chiefs, Chiefs are asleep at the wheel to start this football I game. I, I would agree. absolutely be shocked. Might happen throughout the game once they get well, a 20 might, nothing yeah, lead again. Exactly but. right. Yeah, exactly right. Um, so we'll end this with another two stats and a lie because yeah. you did so well on the first one. This is on the Chiefs' defense. So the Chiefs' defense, which you're talking up here, it's got a little bit better. Woo. This uh, is pressure right here. So here you go. Kansas City was a top 10 defense in yards per play given up this regular season. Kansas City was top 10 in sacks per pass attempt this regular season. And Kansas City was top 10 in red zone defense this season. So two of those are true. It's been a good defense. One, though, a little bit of an exaggeration. Hmm. One could say false. This is, a good, this is a good one. Where are they not quite as good? All right. Don't tell me anything yet. I'm just talking it out here. All right. I, I feel like the... The Devin stat one, I'm going to say they I, – I feel like they're a top 10. Hmm, I'm trying to think here as the season goes. Here, I'm, I'm just so you know, I'm not looking yeah, at these stats. Yeah, it seems I'm, a little fishy. You're well, stalling for I'm time pulling You're up, very quick at getting stats. Never, and, I'm pulling up the Kansas City schedule. I just okay, got to look at right. the schedule a little bit. Okay. All right. That, that's my biggest problem. Okay. It's okay. good that they're top 10 in three of the of these uh, – or two of these three. Well, I, I think they're top 10 in red zone. I'm going to say that. Oh, boy. Oh, shut up. You're said I'm right about that because you just said, oh, boy. No, that's not actually true. That's that's false. It is false? That's false. Damn. Their defense is actually, your instincts was wrong on this one. Damn. One of the worst. Only the Colts were worse at giving up touchdowns in the red zone. I, I don't know what I, you know, I kind of was, as I was sitting there looking at the schedule, I was going, you know, man, I remember kind of big plays on these and maybe they more points were happening outside the red zone. 
And then I remembered, shit. Yeah. So once teams get in there, it's like, yeah, they were eighth in yards per play given up. Very good. Top 10 in yeah, football. Right. Sack rate was fifth in the NFL, eight in, or about nine uh, dropbacks are getting a sack, 9%. Um, but yeah, they were only the Colts were worse once a team got to the red zone at giving up touchdowns. Man, that's that's I'm I'm I'm, I'm surprised by that. I'm I really am. That's uh, that's actually kind of shocking. So yeah. there it is. There's the formula for the Jaguars. Just get in the red zone. Get in the red zone. That's as e- it's as easy <laughs> as that. Yeah, as easy as that. Probably and too aggressive down there, knowing the Chiefs. Maybe if we did like a deep dive and I watched all their red zone plays. And, and who knows? Maybe they got better as the year went on too. This doesn't. I, I think that. that's where my mind went. I was just when I was thinking about it, I was going, "Wait, I remember the Broncos making some big plays that weren't in the red zone." Mm-hmm. You know, I remember the Seahawks. I felt like it was kind of the same way, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, yeah, so I got one wrong. Why would that wrong. be? Can you? Can you? Why would that be happening to them? I think it is the over aggression. You think? I it think would they be can the be a little bit that way. Yeah, they can be a little bit like, "Hey, we're gonna force the quarterback all out blitz." You know, try to get them to stress their protection, do that. You know, they're, they're a little bit of like, their one thing can be a little sometimes go for the jugular a little too much instead right. of just like play it conservative. Let's drop people in zone and see if our pass rush can get there. All right, one more game to talk about. Our first game on Sunday, 3 o'clock, Bengals at the Bills. It is the game that we did not get in Week 17 for obvious reasons. DeMar Hamlin, who knows? Maybe he'll be at this game. That mm. would be really yeah. interesting to see. Yep. I think some rumors swirling out there about that. He's been in communication with the team. He's been around the team a little bit, so that has been all good news on that front. So... Um, is there anything, I mean, going into that game, you made a point a couple of times on the pod. You go, I think it's going to be lower scoring than people think. Of course, you got, you got Burrow, you got Allen. People think it's going to be this shootout game. You go, I think it's going to be a little low scoring. The way the game started out, did you still feel like that? (laughs) No, I didn't. (laughs) You thought you were going to be wrong. And again, the the early game's hard, right? Because it's, you know, it's, it's defenses against quarterbacks like that and sometimes and offenses that are attack you and got a lot of it takes them a minute to settle in the game feels like they're just getting hit by haymakers like wait they brought this play out whoa this play oh whoa he's good well yeah. he avoids you know so there, there can be some settling in it can be game planning in those first few plays Definitely. too for offense right. no no doubt about it it's, it's usually always that right yeah. they're giving you their best stuff they came up with during the week and right. then that's when the defensive coordinator goes oh okay wait i can't play this defense against this formation they're gonna do this to me i gotta kind of change that yeah and that's usually how it goes but man i will say for the cincinnati offense to the buffalo defense it did not look good it looked very easy both drives Right, they went down. They scored a touchdown. The second drive, of course, is when the Demar Ham- Hamlin horrible thing happened. But they were moving the ball. You just threw an in cut to D- T Higgins, and you were going, "Ooh, man, I don't like the way this looks." Yeah. Right. The injuries to the offensive line are going to help Buffalo like immensely, immensely. Right. I think again, where this is different, and again, it's a matchup league. Buffalo. I do think was worried about, wait, that O-line healthy right then can run the ball on us a little bit. Mm. So we do have to protect a little bit about that. And we can't just totally disregard it. And their pass protection without Von Miller, I think they had to worry about that too a little bit. So that all looked like it was playing in favor. And we've talked about Buffalo. What do they like to do? They don't like to play man. We know that. They are a zone team. Sure. Joe Burrow is the best zone quarterback in football. Right, so they and from that standpoint, it did not look good for Buffalo. But now, with the three, those three of those offensive linemen aren't playing in the game anymore. It, it it's going to favor to like we talked about with Dallas against the Bucks, where if I'm McDermott, I'm going, eh, I'm not even going to worry about the run. Let's play pass defense until they prove it to us that we can they can actually run the ball sure. against our pass fronts. Yeah, right. Can they? I don't know if they're going to be able to, especially if Jordan Phillips is healthy. I just uh, that's that's you know he to me is a little bit of the underlying key for the Buffalo Bills. Hmm. Jordan Phillips is their best big guy. Stop, stop, you know the double teams and make a mosh pit kind of guy. He to me, or they're a different defense when he's on the field and and playing in a game. But yeah, I don't think they can. Pass rush, you know, it's a good pass rush by Buffalo. It's not like it was with Von Miller, but that's scary too, you know. And and so that's where I worry about the dynamics of the game changing a little bit. And I think that's 
favorable to Buffalo because I do think nonetheless, regardless of the first matchup or whatever, I think Cincinnati is going to have answers. I think they got answers, even in that game there. We saw that, you know, those were, what was that, week 17, right? Yeah. Those were, that was hard work that first drive of the game, if you remember right, you know, with, with Josh Allen and, and company there. It was, it was hard work. You know they 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 had a he had to make some magic and really squeeze some balls in for them to to get a field goal, and I guess uh, that's where the game is evened up a little bit because of the injuries in the Bengals. I, I clearly felt like the Bengals were the better looking team in the early part mm. of that game. Well, the good news for the Bengals is that they're pretty good at stopping the run too, and the Bills don't have a very good run exactly, game, so right. it will fall on Josh Allen's shoulders. I, I think so. I think it's going to really fall on both quarterbacks' shoulders. If neither team has a run game, yeah. And both defenses know that kind yeah. of, you know, who can who can tear up the other defense more, Josh Allen with the weapons he has, or Joe Burrow and the weapons he has, and the time that he'll. I know. Have to throw. See, I guess I go with Josh Allen just because I still worry about the time. I do. You know, it's just it's and then I you know I don't love the the Bills offensive line, but it's good. Um, now where that get equal equaled out just a little bit is, you know, Bengals do have a pretty good pass rush. Bengals do more on the defensive side. They have a little more flexibility with what they play. The Bengals will be able to play man-to-man against this group. The Bengals do have more of a variety of different zones and three-man rushes with spies and all that that we've talked about going back to last year in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So maybe that can equal things out. But I guess I, I'm going to say it, part two. I think this one could be end up being a defensive struggle. Oh Why boy, we call we it a defensive again. struggle when it's an offensive struggle? I don't know, but I think it's 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 a oh you know what I mean. It's kind of one of those things we always go. It's defensive struggle, even though we're going no, the offenses are struggling, right? I never thought about you know, that makes, before. It's, it's a weird one. This game is a defensive struggle. It's right. like, we ain't struggling out here. Yeah, right. The defense, the defense are like we're, we're kicking fine. ass. <laughs> <laughs> this is a defensive juggernaut. We're killing it. <laughs> yeah, out that's here. true. I never thought of that I know, before. I know, but so yeah. That, but I, I, I do think that'll happen, and I do think just those little glimmers of plays with the offensive line issues that McDermott is going to be able to look at that Leslie Frazier and go, oh, they were trying to do this against our zones, or they were doing this. So they'll have a little bit of an answer for that, but uh, I'm I'm very intrigued by this matchup and the whole dynamic of everything around this one. It's like if we're messing up our words on the pod, it's not like a stuttering struggle. Stutters are like we're crushing it right now. Exactly, it's a talking tr- uh, trouble. Right. Right. Struggle. <laughs> exactly. There it is. It's a talking struggle. <laughs> there it is. It is exactly. It's that. happening. Uh, There's uh, no film to watch on this game, right? The film has been erased. So yeah. I can't find – I didn't get to watch the first two series or anything like that. Yeah. Um, so I can't give you much of a, you know, detailed gleam exactly of how things were played. I'm sorry about that, but that's just the way it is. Uh, there's one thing that, that Josh Allen and the Bills did in the game against the Dolphins. They threw deep. They threw deep quite a bit. Um, and maybe it was just that game, but he threw the ball more than 20 yards downfield 13 times versus the Dolphins, completed five of those. 150 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. In the regular season, he just it was averaging two of five on those deep throws. So they threw deep so much more in that playoff game. Do you think that is the case against this Bengals defense again? I, I, I you know, listen, he's always going to push the ball down the field a few times every game, but I don't think it's going to be like we saw last week, right? We had the question on Monday, like, why was he throwing those 50 50 balls and doing that? Because they were up in the face. Just going, wait, we got people all on the Ryan scrimmage, and this is this is one of your only answers, right? So he was, you know, just doing what the defense told him to a degree in right. that department. I don't think he's going to get those same opportunities in this game. I think Cincinnati's going to look at it and go, no, we don't think you can run. And now we, we know how to contain a mobile quarterback. We did it against Patrick Mahomes last year. So we're not going to just give you one-on-one bomb opportunities to throw the football up to Stephon Diggs and do that. You know, but that's the crazy thing with Josh Allen. And that's why, to me, it's still crazy he wasn't the second team all pro. You know, again, he's working with John Brown and Cole Beasley. Nobody wanted him football. But, you know, I still hear people tell me the weapons of the Buffalo Bills. Mm-hmm. Okay. Gabe Davis showed up last week. Yay. Okay. It's like the first time in what, eight weeks we've seen him? 
You know, it's, it's it's like he I, shows up in the playoffs. Well, That's it's just a little bit of that. His best the hater is shove of Josh Allen sometimes, and I know there's no haters. I know everybody realizes how good. I don't think still people realize how good. Yeah. Like to the point of where like, and I said this today on Pro Football Talk with Josh Allen. If we took the 40 best throws in football this year in the NFL, Josh Allen is going to be on that list more than anybody, followed by Patrick Mahomes. But Josh Allen's going to have the most. I mean, we kind of take it for granted when we go. Oh, he just was off his back foot. He threw it 60 yards in the air and 60 yards up high in the air, too, and it was on the money, and we just go, ah, oh, that's Josh Allen. We don't even go, like, that was unbelievable throw anymore. We don't even do it. Yeah. And uh, he's made us numb to that, and I do think people have lost that that sight, let alone him being, what is he, the leading rusher on his football team? Yep. You know, I mean, come on. That's... Life is all about expectations. If you expect greatness and then you see greatness, you're not going to be you as impressed. you got to be greater. you got to yeah. be greater than uh, great. I know. Greater than what you expect. Yeah, that's not fair always. So how great will these offenses be this weekend? Bet MGM has the highest scoring team in the divisional round. Odds out there. The favorite to score the most points, the Kansas City Chiefs, plus 195. Mm. Right behind them, the Eagles at plus 400. But the Bills not far behind them. They're at plus 450. Then you got the 49ers, Jaguars, uh, Favored to score the least, or the least chance of being the highest scoring team, I guess, is another way to put it, uh, the Giants, plus 1,900. Yeah, well, they probably saw some of the issues we saw with the Giants offense that we were discussing there. Hmm, it's interesting. I mean, hey, the Chiefs would be the team that I would bet on. Yes. If you made me one bet, certainly, mm -hmm. that'd be the one. I'm a little surprised by the Bills being third on that list. You know, I, I am against a team that... You know, the Bengals, like we talked about, I think match up kind of good with that that defense. I think it's the Josh Allen effect to what you were kind of just talking about. I mean, 49ers have been scoring like 30-plus points every week here. That really. would be the one where if you were going, hey, wait, the odds and I can make a chunk of change, that would be the one where I'd go bet on that. Because, one, I could see Dallas maybe scoring a few more points on the 49ers mm -hmm. defense than we expect. But because of, like we talked about earlier, Dallas's lack of size, they might have to get really aggressive and do things like that. That could lend itself. Like, I wouldn't be shocked if we came away from that game and went like, damn, the 49ers won 34-28, yeah. right? I, I would not be shocked. And it ended up being like the high-scoring game of the weekend. Now, it could go the other way, too. Uh, that's what's scary about that football game because, you know, like we've talked about good coaches, good talent, all of that. But I, I could certainly think that would be the one I would bet on that was, you know, out of the side, the top two that I'd go, ooh, I could bet a little money here and make a big chunk of change. The 49ers won. Yeah, they to scored me. 41 last week, and then here are their point totals in the end of the regular season 38 points, 37, 37, 21, 35, 33. Right. And Dallas gave up some points towards the end of the year mm -hmm. at, at times. So, yeah, I, that, 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 and the matchup, as we always talk about, is very key. The action never stops at Bet MGM. You can sign up now using the bonus code SIMS. Your first wager is risk free up to $1,000. So, say you bet $100 on the Jaguars or the Giants to win a Super Bowl. Whoa. I will tell you, you're wasting $100. <laughs> but if you win, yeah. you will get $2,500. Oh, okay. But if you lose, you will still get $100 worth of free bets. Simply download the BetMGM app today or go to BetMGM.com and enter the bonus code SIMS to make your first wager risk-free up to $1,000. Don't waste your money. We don't want to see that. But if you nope. get the free, but bets, if you got then. a lot of money, then waste it. That's Go true. Ahead. If you got a lot of right. money, waste it. But waste it on, on good things too. Yeah. Waste it on on us, maybe. Right. You know, buy, supply us with T-shirts that we can give the homies. You know, <laughs> um, Pete's Pete's loves that it's gone full circle on the pod now. All right, we end with this. Our hat tip to the homies who filled out the playoff predictions at the beginning of the year, eight hundred and sixteen. So we like to kind of sum up how how we're doing. Yeah. As the playoffs are progressing, seven homies had the Dolphins winning it all. Wow, they're done, man. At a time mid-year, I was like, wow, those seven homies might be geniuses. Right. Yep. Total, total stuck in two and on those seven. You, yeah. gotta, you guys got to get out of the, the wormhole of two and on. <laughs> uh, the Vikings, joking. whatever. What, is there a Vikings term that we can give now for Vikings fans that were all over us? Oh. For not giving them the respect they deserve. I know, right? Um, Nine homies had yeah. them winning it all. Wow. Unfortunately. Florio's whole family and who else? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mike voted twice in the poll, maybe. Uh, Ravens, 12% had them in the AFC Championship game. You're going to be sadly wrong. Four had them in the Super Bowl, 4%. 3% had them winning it all. That is not going to happen. Hey, Lamar Jackson plays AFC Championship game. Totally was a different. very real possibility. Yes. A hundred percent. Yeah. And now next year with the Dolphins, I mean, maybe they will be in the <laughs> Super Bowl or AFC Championship game. Oh, the Chargers, my Super Bowl pick. 
Nine percent of you out there had them in the Super Bowl. Very smart people. Four percent had them winning it all, including me. I Sadly, forgot you had them like, winning it all. I had them win- against you the Packers. You said Super Bowl the whole year. Against the Packers. Right, yeah, winning it all. Yep. One team didn't Sorry. make it. One team lost in the first round. I, I might still believe in the Chargers next year. I don't think you're crazy for that. I might double down. Just like we like to do on this pod, That's I might right. double down on that. Probably right. not, but I might. it might happen. And the Buccaneers, wow. 46% of the homies out there had them in the NFC Championship game. Wow. Were the expectations that high for that? I guess they were. It seems like so, like... There's a reason so we made long. them the number one or two roster oh, in all that's football true. for the year, remember? That's true. How did yeah. it all fall apart for them? Well, I think the it's O-line injuries, team. Donovan yeah. Smith not playing well, Mike Def- Evans age a little. A lot of injuries on defense, too, a lot secondary. Of in- no Shaq Barrett, right? I mean, yes, there was. they were they were a beat-up football team, and then, like we discussed, there was a lot of off-field distraction from them this year, a ton. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you know, I, I remember filling out the brackets thinking, like, man, because I think I had the Bucks losing in the divisional round, I think. And I remember going, damn, am I really not going to put the Bucks in the in the NFC Championship game? And, of course, I didn't, and thank God I did But didn't. if I would have told you then, FTX is going to take a nosedive, you'd be like, oh, okay, I feel better about it right now. <laughs> 42 homies out there, just 5% of the ballots, 42 of the 816 ballots have their final four teams still alive including the man to my left in a great sweater, Chris Sims. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Way to go, 42 homies. My 41 homies. I guess I'm one of them. Are they? No, they're 42. I am one of them. Okay, what up, my other 41 homies? Way to go. Well, when you just take chalk. Well, you know, sometimes I mean. chalk is the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> I know. How many times I had people tell me that recently and go, yeah. well, you know, I just – I just tried to do something different, and I was like, oh, okay, that's good for you. I just was trying to be right. I don't know. <laughs> and, yeah. I don't know. and you, you still might not be. <laughs> Who no, knows? No, Although know. all your teams are So I, I just favorite. saw I had – I I think I went – I had Bills, Chiefs, and mm-hmm. Eagles, Niners. I did. Yep. I totally went chalk. I remember thinking about, man, do I have the Bengals upsetting, you know. So there it is. Yeah, I had the Chiefs getting revenge against the Bengals and Buffalo beating Baltimore. All way right, off, and then off. I had the Eagles beating the Packers Oof. and the Niners beating the Bucks. Okay, all right. right. So I had the Bucks and Cowboys playing in the playoffs early on, and and uh, the Bucks winning that game. I obviously. didn't have the four. I didn't have the Forty Niners in the playoffs because I was like, I think this whole thing, Trey Lance, who knows what's going to happen there, is going to mess things up. And lo and behold, they're playing Bl- Brock Purdy. In the, so it's like almost like my prediction was right. Like they're going to have issues at the quarterback position. It didn't matter. Well, that, that's where the, another one is just like, who wins coach of the year? Where, which one do you hold more in regard? The Giants coming out of nowhere and getting in the playoffs? Brian Dayball? What an amazing Gi- job. Why are the Giants – like I, I hear everyone say Brian Dayball. It's like, yeah, they came out of nowhere. I mean, the Jacksonville Jaguars had the number one pick two years in a row, and they made the playoffs too. Why is Dayball's story more impressive than, that, than that, Doug Peterson? It's a valid point. Maybe I think you get the number one quarterback. That probably hurts them yeah. in the draft. Maybe some young talent. They spent all that money in the offseason. Yeah. But that's a really good point, Ahmed. I'm not going to lie. I haven't really thought about that. Doug Peterson needs to be in the conversation a little bit more. Yeah. Pete you know? says Seahawks, Pete well, yeah, Carroll. Pete Carroll, no that definitely that. was. But I, I, get back to my damn question, okay? Stop giving me <laughs> curveballs. Yeah. yeah. Day ball with what he did. Yeah. All right. Which is amazing. We didn't expect this. Shanahan, we knew the team was going to be good. We got mm-hmm. that. But did we know that they were going to go with a third string and right. then be like the most dominant team in football the last eight That's weeks? That's what's most impressive to me because we see every other team in football, you know, Skylar Thompson, you go, you go second string, you go third string quarterback, yeah. the offense falls off a cliff. Right. And yes, yeah, talent up there, good offensive line, good running back, good trade. Right. You know, maybe maybe they get maybe they get GM of the year. Maybe they for the roster construction and Lynch and Shanahan can share that. Yeah. Um, executives of the year, but like, there's no other team that does that. I know. With that's their right. third string it's, quarterback, it's really that's a struggle. I mean, I'm, I'm who would you who would I, you I vote voted for? for Kyle Shanahan. You know, I, I'm biased. I know that. I get that. I also think he got screwed over by not winning it a few years ago when he won the Super Bowl. They gave it to John Harbaugh, and I was like, wait, everybody knew the Ravens were going to be good. We saw Lamar go to the playoffs the year before, right? So I, I didn't understand that. So, yeah, I went with Shanahan. You know, I, Again, I think if we wrote that story before the year and said that, and we go, oh, man, the 49ers didn't make the playoffs. That's, that's the thought we would have. Yeah. Not that, oh, gosh, the 49ers are 1-11 in a row with a third-string quarterback. And not just win, they are dominating teams. Right. Right. And that, that to me, you know, is, is pretty freaking amazing. Because yeah. then you're also juggling with, 
you know, the psyche of your locker room and, and dealing with all that. So both were amazing, but I did vote for Shanahan. I'd go Shanahan. And your vote counts, too, by the way. It does. Right? Thank you. You, you actually yeah. voted. We're going to go through all your whole ballot. Yeah. It was the first time you've ever done that, first right? First time ever. For these? Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's, uh, it was good. It's, um, I, I, I put a lot of work into it. It was yeah. more work than I thought. Mm-hmm. And uh, I tried, you know, the one thing that bothers me about the, the all-pro team a little bit is we kind of just go, who's the best player at that position on the team that's also the best? Yeah. Right? Right. Oh, so let's take a defensive tackle from one of the best teams. Let's take a defense from one of the best teams. And there's a few that I don't understand, and we'll get into that some other yeah, time. Yeah, we should go through yeah. the whole list. And we have, yeah. Maybe the homies will no chime in No way Devontae Adams should be on first-team all-pro okay. before A.J. Brown. No way – I think this happened, right? Miles Garrett should be first team defense end over Micah Parsons. No way. No way. Those are just two right off the bat. And also no way Jalen Hurts should be the second team all pro over Josh Allen. That would be just my quick assessment. We'll dive into that later at <laughs> some other time and you can hate me then. We'll, we'll do it again. We'll have the homies uh, we'll have the homies vote in for who they choose for yeah, their team and we'll sure. we'll do the same thing all over again. Cool. But I would go Kyle Shanahan, coach of the year, number yeah. one. I would go Doug Peterson, number two, and I would go Kevin O'Connell, number three because Damn, you just stay balls all the way down the list. I'm not even going to give Dayball one, two, or three, or four here. I mean, shit. My Detroit Lions cleaned up on him easy. You know, it's just like if Dan Campbell's not in the conversation, then you know, get out of here. I know. With that. Where, are your, where are your Lions right now? Yeah, that's right. They're <laughs> celebrating a great offseason, you know? All um, right. Well, we're going to celebrate our playoffs still. Ahmed, you the man. As always, he wore his favorite red pants today, I just did. so everybody listening and not watching knows. Yep. Uh, it is divisional round weekend. It is the best weekend of the year. You love it. I cannot wait. I will be in Kansas City on Saturday, live and in person. We're going to watch the Try not to get game. run over by a ref. Last time I was there, I got oh, run over by a ref really? on the sideline. Why? Yeah. Dur- what, during the game? During or no? the game, late in the game. Why? What yeah. were you doing out on the field? I was in awe of watching Mahomes throw a deep ball to Tyree Kill when I thought they were going to run the clock out. Refs like, don't oh. like that. Did he yell at you? A number of four-letter words. Oh, no. You've never seen that video of the ref hitting me and pushing me? No. Right? He couldn't push me over. I mean, I'm a beast. I've never but, seen that. And I had my LeBrons on. Oh. But, <laughs> yeah, yes. It was, he pushed me and called me, you <laughs> bastard. Get really? Out of the way. Yeah, he said a bunch of things. Did you ever see him after the game? No. Meet me in I, the parking lot? I was right. I just said, I'm sorry. I was like, I, I was off the You're white. Wrong. I was off the white. Oh, so you think you had a case for. Nah, I got to be more off the white than that. They like to go on the inside edge of the white and not be around the fracas too much. Did so. you get a letter from the NFL after that? <laughs> I did not. I got a lot of public embarrassment. <laughs> Where are you going to watch the uh, Giants Eagles after that? Probably just hopefully in a restaurant or my hotel room to a degree eat some food have a drink to a degree what are you talking about here? Uh, <laughs> to a degree to lots of degrees i got a i got a early flight sunday morning coming back so i can be in my couch and no risk or yeah. anything for the, the mean, two games on sunday but this is an important game oh, don't worry, i'll be watching i'll be watching i think we gotta nail this down you can't just let this by chance happen. No, no. I'm going to look tonight about restaurants and places I can go and watch the game okay. and, and have a little fun. All right. Right. Good. And be a, the annoying New Yorker in the middle of Kansas City <laughs> where they're like, who is this obnoxious guy <laughs> does he saying, so let's go Giants, <laughs> yeah. big blue yeah. G-Man. Yeah. They're going to be like, get yeah. him out They'll of here. They'll be happy, though. They'll be celebrating their wins. Uh, they won't care. They won't care. <laughs> All right, everybody. Be good. Enjoy the weekend. Picks podcast with me and Florio. That will be coming out tomorrow. we got to figure out some of the timeline because I am in Kansas City and with Andy Reid and all that, but we'll figure it out. It's coming shortly. You'll see it Thursday or Friday. I would like to say I was six for six last week. (laughs) All right. Peace out, everybody. Clap it up. Thanks for watching, homies. Hit subscribe to see all my unbuttoned videos. You get to see me, Ahmed Farid, all the big player breakdowns, game breakdowns, player interviews, and my film analysis. So please subscribe. Chris Sims, Unbuttoned. Peace out.